Every year, 500 billion plastic bottles are produced worldwide. To produce such an amount, huge amounts of plastic are needed. But how are Coca-Cola plastic bottles made? In this video, we will take you behind the scenes to discover how oil is transformed into a Coca-Cola plastic bottle. Many transparent bottles are made with a type of plastic called polyethylene terephthalate. 50% of all Coca-Cola products come in plastic bottles. This plastic is obtained from crude oil. The crude is transported by tankers, specially designed for the transport of crude oil. Each one transports up to 2 billion barrels of oil, extracted from the depths of the earth. From the tankers, it is pumped to dry land and driven to huge refineries. The problem is that the crude is composed of different hydrocarbon molecules, mixed with impurities such as salt, sulfur, and traces of metals. In order to use it, its different components must be separated. A refinery breaks down the crude into a variety of components with different sizes, weights, and boiling temperatures. The liquid crude oil is pumped through hot furnaces and distillation towers, where the lighter components rise to the top and heavier ones settle at the bottom of the tower. In this oven, the raw material is heated to more than 400 degrees Celsius, so that it evaporates and then the hot gases are introduced into a 15 meters high distillation unit. As the gases cool down, they condense. First, the heavy fuels with high boiling temperatures such as diesel, then gasoline. The lighter fuels such as propane or ethylene used to make plastic go to the top. After processing, ethylene solidifies and takes this form of polyethylene pallets. The plastic granules are then used to make products such as 2 liter water and soda bottles. Every day, seven trucks loaded with polyethylene pallets pass through the factory gates. Once inside, they pump their 25-ton load into these giant 300 cubic meter threads. Plastic bottles are light, but they have to be strong. The carbonated drinks they contain have a lot of pressure. Public drinks require a special manufacturing process to create a crack-free plastic bottle. The manufacture of plastic bottle consists of two phases. First, a preform is created and then it is heated to turn it into a bottle. To create a preform, the factory pours the polyethylene pallets into an injection molding machine. Inside this machine, a corkscrew-shaped drill pushes the pallets towards a heater. This heater has a temperature of around 290 degrees Celsius, enough to melt them. Then, the machine injects that liquid plastic into a mold. This mold creates the first stage of the plastic bottle. The preform. The molten resin is extruded through a die to form a hollow tube. The die is a tool that shapes the molten material as it passes through it. When it is shaped, these robots cool the preforms before leaving them on the conveyor belt. The factory has 15 of these injection molding machines. Between them all, they can create more than half a million preforms per hour. One part of the neck goes unnoticed, but it is essential. It is this support protrusion. This protrusion is used to transport the preforms throughout the blood molding process. And when it takes the shapes of a bottle, this part is also used to hold it while it is filled. The molded preforms harden almost instantly. Thanks to an incorporated cooling system, these preforms are on the way to becoming Coca-Cola bottles. The preforms fall until a slot holds them thanks to the support of projection. These preforms are like deflated balloons that will become bottles when they are inflated. To make them flexible, they are spun around a heater that leaves them at 115 degrees Celsius. Now they are soft enough to inflate like plastic balloons. Gear wheels transport them through the support projections to the molds. The next stop for the preform is a machine called a reheat stretch blow molder. These are stainless steel molds that will turn the preforms into bottles. Once installed, each mold will create two bottles. The molds are subjected to liquid cooling. Cold water enters through the blue hose and hot water exits through the red one. In a matter of seconds, it heats each perform enough so that the plastic is malleable and then insert a rod to stretch the performs longitudinally while introducing air at an extremely high pressure. This forces the perform into a bottle-shaped mold. The shape of the mold determines the final shape of the plastic bottle. 
Cold water is introduced into the mold to cool and harden the plastic almost instantly. The end of the mold is at very low temperature thanks to the cold water that reaches it. This cold metal is what gives the bottle its shape. When the bottle touches the outer edge of the mold, it is finished and ready to go. This very fast machine produces more than 10,000 bottles per hour. With each revolution, 40 bottles are produced. Once the tube has been inflated and the bottle has been shaped, it is subjected to the cooling process so that the plastic solidifies and the shape of the bottle is fixed. Once the bottles have cooled, this conveyor belt holds each bottle by the support protrusion. It is not just any conveyor belt, as this system is powered by air. The bottles travel more than a kilometer on these tracks until they reach the end of the pallet area. The bottles are stacked on a pallet and in less than 24 hours they are sent to Coca-Cola bottling plant, where they'll be filled with their iconic drink. These two little plastic bottles have just arrived from the factory. Before they can be filled, they have to be lined up. A machine known in the industry as a depalletizer is in charge of this process. A conveyor belt takes the finished bottles to the packing area. The bottles then resume their journey through the transport system, once again held in place by the support ledge. They are then flipped over. An ionized air burst cleans any remaining residue and neutralizes any static charge that has been created. A printed label is wrapped around the bottle and stuck in place. The bottles finish their process in the filling room. The filling process ensures that the product is distributed evenly and consistently in each bottle. Although they are new bottles, the soda factory has to clean them before filling them. This rinser turns the bottles over, then rinses them with water. Once the water has been drained, the machines turn the bottles back over and head to the filling station. Meanwhile, in the mixing room, technicians prepare the soda that will be bottled in this production batch. The beverage is passed to a pressurized tank called a carbonator. Then, an injection of carbon dioxide introduces bubbles of gas into the drink. The carbonated beverage is sent to the bottle's depot. The machine extracts the air from each bottle and then fills it with 2 liters of Coca-Cola. More than 800 bottles are filled per minute. The first thing that a filling valve does is pressurize the bottle to balance the pressure at the filling nozzle. It takes one full turn of the wheel to fill a bottle. The Coca-Cola inside is very cold. The liquid is at about 2 or 3 degrees Celsius. That keeps the product stable. If it were hot, it would foam, and it wouldn't fit in the bottle. When the bottles are relieved from the valve, they are depressurized. The best way to keep the pressure is with the caps. Thousands of them are poured into the filling machine. Once the bottle has been filled with the product, a cap is placed on the top of the bottle to seal the contents. After the bottles have been filled and sealed, they are subjected to an inspection process to make sure they are properly sealed. The bottles are placed in boxes or pallets for transport and distribution.